the history of our people, the history of the Highland clans, the clan folk, a cold, harsh, jagged edge history, from the lands that we farmed, from the cold, rugged peaks of the mountainside that gave birth to us, what we defended, our loves, our language, our music, our wives and our bairns, the very reasons we took up the weapons of our ancestors, from the Claymore to the evolution of these weapons. I we were taken from the young ages of seven years old and put into foster care so we could learn to use these weapons, but all in the defence of that which we loved all in the defence of our language, our music, our song and our dance. Every thread died from the plants within our clan's area to the weapons we used, weapons sculpted by necessity and weapons that we learned to use in the cold, harsh dawns of the Highland hillsides when ice and frost would stick to the corners of our fingertips. And we learn to fight and we learn to defend. All of which we bring back home. Nothing was romantic about this pursuit. Nothing that we learned, nothing that we were sculpted into, bore any resemblance to romance. And our enemies came from all sides. They came from the oceans, they came from the south, and they came from the Mediterranean in time. By necessity and by commitment to the defence of our land and the defence of our culture and ultimately the defence of who we were, our very identity, we used these weapons and we used these weapons the cold, harsh light of the Highland Dawn. And we used these weapons on hillsides and slopes. And I, occasionally our enemies came from our own people. We're an argumentative race, a race perhaps of flamboyant, dancing, poetic individuals. And we argued, and we fought, and we squabbled, defended and rose for our chieftains. But not through romance, not through some idea of clan, family, love and life. We lived on this land and that was that land we have to defend. And consequently, the land rose for us in times in our history also. When that great army came from the Mediterranean, the army of Rome, and marched into this land thinking to conquer us, it was not the Calgacus and the tribes of this land that eventually conquered the Romans. The Romans were conquered by the harshity of the wind, the weather, the cold, the rain and the swamps, all that backed up by the psychotic midget, sent the Romans back home again. So the link to the land and the link between the land and the people is unbreakable. And for centuries we were the guardians of this land. Perhaps an issue that is now misunderstood or forgotten. The story ends there in Claude Moore, five miles from Inverness, where we had been dragged Stuart Monarch, who wanted to put himself back in the throne of our land. We rose because our chieftains asked us to rise. And the land that we protected was protected no more. And the wives and the children back in our clan lands were left exposed to the harshities of the red coated soldiers. Their men dead in Dramossi, lying with musket shots harsh steel by our sides. So now tell me of romance. Tell me of the romance of the island clan. I see no romance in death. I see no romance in my clan folk lying bloodied in Culloden Moor. I don't see death. I see murder. I see the hearts of Highland clansmen that rose for the best of intentions. Taking down roads which we should never have been. Taken to lands that we had no, we had no right being in. 
leaving our wife and our children exposed in our clan lands. And so the cycle is broken. <laughs>